Assalamualaikum. So I was asked uh, to be on this panel by Naveed Uncle um, a few days ago, and um, as um, when he asked me to uh, be on the panel, I was honored, but I also realized I have a big responsibility. Um, so I went ahead, and, uh, and I, I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to try to understand what had happened in, in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And uh, I understood that there was a gentleman who went and shot three young people. And uh, so I decided to look into their lives. Thanks to Facebook and the social media, you can start to do that. Uh, you, can, you can find a lot of information very easily. And um, I want to share just briefly some of that with you about these people that you may not have already heard from uh, CNN and other sources. So Dia Barakat was 23 years old and he was studying to be a dentist. He was not only going to school, but he was the kind of person that outside of that was gathering funds and resources to go with a group of 10 dentists to Turkey. Uh, he was gonna over there help Syrian refugees with their dental hygiene needs. That's service in a way that I couldn't even think of. How do Syrian refugees, dental hygiene in Turkey? And this is not the first time he had done that. His wife, Yusuf Abu Salah, was 21 years old. She was studying human biology at uh, NC State University. Um, according to an interview she gave to StoryCorp uh, just a little while before she was killed, she mentioned in the interview that she was extremely proud to be an American. And uh, she was blessed that uh, she got to grow up in this amazing country. Um, Together, they helped develop the uh, United Muslim Relief Triangle chapter of North Carolina. And not only were they great human beings just outside of what they were trying to accomplish their dreams and goals, they were a great example, which is obvious in the fact that Razan Abu Salah, who was also killed, was their younger sister, was inspired by them to join the organization they formed. And she was serving as, as an officer on that organization. Her job on that organization was to feed, to organize the feeding of homeless people in Raleigh, North Carolina. I don't do this right now. Most people here don't do this as a regular basis outside of their school. So these people, I looked and looked and looked and found, tried to look for a reason of why someone would want to kill these people. We're always taught, you know, in school and other areas when you're trying to solve a problem is continue to ask why until you try to get to a root cause of a problem. So then I asked why would Craig Hicks want to kill these people? So I went to Craig Hicks' Facebook, Facebook profile. Craig Hicks did not post anything against people who go and try to provide dental hygiene resources to refugees. He did not post anything against people who try to feed the homeless. He did post a lot about people who believe in God. He posted quite a bit against Muslims and Christians as well. May it be because of a parking dispute that triggered it or not, but his mindset and his belief was very much against people of religion, Muslims and Christians and others. And it seems that that was the only factor that might have led him to reach a point where he thought he should go and kill these people. Whether this was a hate crime or not, as mentioned earlier, the authorities should determine that and prosecute accordingly, and we do request them to do that. But I believe that's the authority's responsibility. As a community, we have a responsibility to ask, why did Craig Hicks have that opinion of Muslims? Why? Upon talking to some of my friends and other people around the community, and what I have come to find is that's probably because of what the media is feeding most of the American population and most of the world about Muslims. And the, with, article, with newspapers like New York Post or CNN, if you turn on the channel, every day you can find Muslims are terrorists, Muslims are terrorists. And this information is being derived by people like ISIS. And believe it or not, we're allowing them to do that. I believe one of the things we need to work on as a community, both Muslims and non-Muslims, is figure out how to change that image of Muslims for the mass population. Figure out how to hold events and do charitable contributions or volunteer our time, do good acts and get the press on those events that we're doing of service and get let people know that we are Muslims are human beings interested in the well-being of themselves and all in their community. With that, I'll, I'll finish, but I just want to urge our community 
both Muslims and all Muslims to try to think and work on a solution to this problem going forward.